Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Roto Paint and Roto in Nuke 7. I'm going to start off in Nuke 6.38 because there's been a number of improvements to uh, the operability of Roto Paint in 7 and I want to show you some of the problems or remind you of some of the problems that exist in the previous version of Nuke. For those that are used to working with Roto Paint you'll know that the more paint strokes you have the slower it gets. So what I have here at the moment is I have clean screen that I've created using a number of clones and uh, reveals from various different frames I've tracked and stabilized and painted through okay I've deliberately tried to bloat this script out a bit more and to make matters worse I've copied that layer for purposes of this tutorial so that we now have a very heavily bloated roto paint node so I'm going to select layer 2, I just selected it, I'm just going to wait for it to actually become selected and then if I select all the other ones, you've got to wait quite a long time before they will update. Okay, and now I'm just going to turn on visibility for those extra layers. Alright, and you can see the interface is quite slow. I'll come out of that mode for the moment, get rid of that overlay. I'll just turn those back off again. Again, it's taken that long. I'm going to deselect the layers then, and we are now waiting for the UI to catch up. As you can see, it's going to take quite a while. I'm going to show you one other thing, which has always been quite awkward. I'm going to grab a layer and I'm going to move layer 8 up above the other layers. Now this could be a series of paint strokes, it could be a series of layers, but as you can see, as I drag it up and drop it, it's taken quite a while to update. And we can now see that we've now got two copies of it, and we have to wait a long time before the copy of layer 8 will disappear. Probably time for a cup of tea. If you're on a Mac, then this would be beach balling by now. And there we go. So it's taken quite a while and the operability has been very, very slow here. Also, I'm just going to have a look at the file size of this uh, script. And we can see it's 6 megabytes. Okay, so one node and we've bloated it up to 6 megabytes already. Moving on to Nuke 7 now. Now if we open up the script we were just looking at into Nuke 7, as a 6.3 script, we will then be prompted to save as a new script because Nuke 7 will alter the format of the Roto Roto Paint nodes and it's a one way transition. You cannot open a Nuke 7's Roto Paint in Nuke 6. So it prompts you to save it as a new script. So here we're going to save it as a brand new script. I'm going to label it Nuke 7. And then if we just again look at the file size you'll see that they've also reduced the file size by the change of format that they're using for Roto Paint. Now if we go into that same Roto Paint, here's the same layers we had before. Just expand this out a bit. Exactly the same paint nodes. Just view the end result. And then if I select these layers, Remember how long the lag was before? I'm just going to turn the visibility on. And again, if I take those and turn them off, a much quicker response. And if I take layer 8 again and I put it back down to where it was, vastly faster than what we had previously. So file size and performance are two major enhancements in Rotopaint and Roto in Nuke 7. Now let's look at some of the other changes. Up at the top here, you'll see a lot of the toolbar parameters have been replaced with icons. And also down here, we've got a couple of new shape modes, Cusp Bezier and Cusp Rectangle. I'll start off looking with a normal Bezier and compare it with the Cusp Bezier. As we create a normal shape, we can pull out handles. With the cuffs bezier, there are no handles to pull out. The points stay cusped unless you specifically ask them not to be. Note also that we've got a nice new colour scheme here, making it much easier to see your points and your handles. 
again with a rectangle. In the past, when you created a shape, if you moved one of the points, it was no longer cusped. With the new cusp rectangle, this is not the case. The points stay cusped, unless you specifically set them not to be. OK, I'm going to create another cusp rectangle. Look at some of the new features. Here we can hide the curves, we can hide the points. This next one is not a new feature in Nuke 7. Turns off the bounding box, and the next one along turns off the bounding box only when you move the shape. This next icon, constant selection, means that if I have a shape selected and I click away, it doesn't deselect the shape. Looking on the image there, if I turn it off and click on the image, it deselects the shape. A couple of other new features then, if we just create a few shapes here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you some of the new copy and paste parameters that are available. OK, three random shapes. Now if I select one shape, if I right click and I go to copy, you see now it tells us that we've got one curve and also it defaults to copy in the points. Now if I select all the shapes and go into the same menu, you'll see it's now changed to curves and it's defaulting to copying the three curves instead. Just get rid of those. I'm going to look at some paint strokes now. So now if I come into paint, just going to choose a more obvious colour. Now if I paint a few strokes on a different frame, now I'm able to just click here and I can adjust them all in one go without having to go up to the lifetime tab. So you've got more control, more options available in the editor. In the next tutorial, we'll be looking at stereo and the new stereo enhancements in Rotopaint.